Hi, everyone. I want to thank you for joining Ryan and I today for our first ever Reline Live. Um, we're bringing this to you since we can't be out in the field to meet you guys face to face. We still want to be able to answer questions, have open dialogue and just chat with all of you. Um, so a little housekeeping I'm going to start with uh, on your guys's go to webinar control panel at the very bottom, you're going to see a chat button. If you open up that chat is where you can send me live questions during this um, during this 30 minute live that we're doing. Uh, you can send it to the entire audience. You can send it to me personally. I am going to be moderating. Um, I'm going to have Ryan answering questions versus watching his computer. So if you had sent them to me or to the entire audience, we can try and get to as many as possible today. We do already have quite a few that were submitted in advance. Um, and then to start, I'd like to uh, launch a poll for you guys. Ryan and I are curious where everyone is coming from, what types of organizations, whether you're an engineering firm, whether you're a DOT, a contractor, we're just trying to, especially this being our first one, trying to get a feel for the type of people that we have on the call. So as we do more and more of these, we will kind of cater our topics to that. Looks like I'm getting a good chunk of you that are answering. So we have a lot of others. Um, looks like quite a few engineering firms. That's great, thank you guys. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close this poll now. Yep, looks good. Quite a few DOTs and engineering firms. So uh, I wanna introduce Ryan Harrington. He is with SnapTight. He has kind of an interesting background, different than a lot of us who I think since college have maybe changed jobs a few times, myself changed industries. Ryan has been with ISCO since he was a junior in high school. <laughs> uh, his, claim to, his claim to fame is he's never had to do a resume. <laughs> um, so his background was with ISCO and then in 2008, remind me that's correct, right, Ryan? You moved into SnapTight, the Reline division. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. All right, well, I'm gonna hand this over to Ryan. He can give you any more information about himself and then um, we'll take off with some questions I have. All right, well, thanks, uh, Cassie, for this opportunity. Um, I'm excited to be part of this. Uh, I know you've got some questions already lined up. And, uh, uh, you know, as far as the background with me, as Cassie said, I started with ISCO in 96. So if this will be 24 years. Um, didn't have a license. So my dad drove me to work for the first six months and just kind of worked my way up from the warehouse to fabrication to administrative work to marketing and now um, 11 years now in the sales side. So uh, fire away, Cassie. Okay. So I kind of decided to maybe start with some of our more difficult questions that came in um, when people registered. So our first one, Ryan, is what immediate effects do you see or have you seen with the government rehabilitation projects? Well, like in a normal, in a normal like election year, which this is an election year, like infrastructure wise, you see a little bit of a dip uh, when it comes to reline work or work uh, underneath the roadways because they want to, during election year, people want to see their money being used. They want to see that taxpayer money being used to pave roads or, or build bridges. So normally this is the type of year where in an infrastructure system, everything kind of dips. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case this year with everything going on. Um, I've got, I think I've got some insight into that and, you know, kind of where this could lead to, but, you know, I was expecting a little bit of a downturn this year anyway. Um, but now, you know, everybody's kind of in flux. So, you know, there's some opportunities out there. Okay. Thank you. So this next one, um, I think is a really interesting question to ask. I didn't know that this was ever done previously. Uh, if there is an infrastructure stimulus put forth, how do you think that will impact the pipe rehab industry? Okay. So I started in the uh, the, the sales side in 2008. In the two first part of 2009, uh, when uh, President Obama was in office, he enacted um, an infrastructure bill. And I think most of the people that are on this call, uh, if you're in the industry for a while, you remember that. 
uh, it was basically a huge influx of money into the infrastructure of the U.S. to help fix bridges, fix pipes, fix roadways. Um, but they had to be shovel ready jobs. And by that, I mean um, the designers, the engineers that are on this call, these, these projects already had already had to be designed and ready to go, ready to literally so that the next day they could put them out to bid, get them bid, get them installed. Um, if, if this administration does an infrastructure bill this year, which I feel like you're, we're gonna see something happen here, summer, fall, there needs to be shovel ready projects available. There needs to be projects that are ready to go, ready to hit the street at any, mo any moment to where you could use that money up. Because I remember when that hit in 2009, it took about six months and a lot of that money was already used up. And we were, we're talking billions and hundreds of billions of dollars that were used up quickly. And they were, it was being gobbled up by the states because they had shovel ready jobs. So, you know, for the ones that are on this call, if you've got projects that you're looking at doing, it would be wise to get those ready, um, whether it be a reline or a bridge work. Uh, reline is a great opportunity to use this money because you can fix, a, you can rehab a roadway, but you can fix a lot of pipes under that roadway while you're rehabbing the road. And that's a quick shovel ready project that can be done um, pretty fast. Thanks. So just to add on to that or kind of follow up a question I have as um, obviously a, a distributor of not just SnapType, but a lot of different products, what do you think we can be doing just to get in front of this before summer and fall? Should we be doing more of these things, um, calling the DOTs? Obviously none of us are traveling right now, so that's kind of hindering that face-to-face -face time. But do you think this type of stuff or is there any other recommendations you have since you've been doing this for so long? So you know, with technology, the ways it's advanced since 11 years ago, this is this is great technology you could use. You could even take it a step further um, for the DLTs that are that are on the call that are involved. If you have pipes that need to be rehabbed or you need somebody to look at, use Skype, use FaceTime. If we can't actually get to your site because we can't travel at this time, let's do this over the phone. Bring your phone to the job site. Get on the call with us. Flip your camera around so we can see what's there and we can see how there is a pipe that may need to be fixed or maybe it's fine. We don't know until we see it. Uh, and yeah. for the engineers, you know, this is a great. I mean, I'm sure a lot of the engineering firms that I've dealt with, they use webinars. They use video for yeah. a lot of the conferences. Um, this is a great opportunity for the engineering firms to to be willing to have a um, like a go-to meeting or have a, a Zoom, they have other, you know, other ones out there where you can have multiple people because a lot of these firms are probably working from home. You have a lot of people working from 20 different homes. You can get them all on one call, one screen and do a presentation. Awesome. Okay. That's what I was, that's what I kind of thought you would say, but I wanted to make sure that you think we're doing what we can right now until um, some of the travel bans lift and things like that. Um, so we had a very product specific question came in. Uh, our existing pipe is broken into multiple segments with different slopes, plus or minus 3%. Can snap type be installed in this situation? So uh, it could be a yes or a no. Uh, there's a lot of questions that need to be asked before you just say, yeah, we could use it. Um, if we're on a job site or if, if if we need to go look at a pipe and we can do it from our phone, the first thing I look at is, can you see all the way through it? If you can see light at the other end of that pipe, the odds are that you can reline that pipe. Um, if you can't, you need to send a camera through to see what's what the obstruction is to understand, is it just a rock in the way? Is the pipe completely crushed? Um, but let's just say that the pipe is jagged and you've got, you know, you've got segmental pieces that are broken. Uh, SnapTight offers a what they call a bullet nose or a nose cone. It's a leading piece that'll help guide you through those imperfections. Um, so like plus or minus 3% deflection, we could actually run a winch through that pipe, hook onto the bullet nose and pull kind of like a pipe bursting scenario, but not it's not pipe bursting. You can actually pull that liner through those imperfections and then grout that whole thing in place. And I actually had a couple of pictures of install slides already made for this, Ryan. So I actually scrolled ahead 
just so you can see on the screen, I, um, people can actually see in the top right corner what a bullet nose looks like that you're referring to. Okay. So, so we will go, we'll get back to these if we, if we want to get that far, but I'll go to my next question because I know this was a big one. Um, is SnapTight approved by all 50 DOTs? We get this a lot, uh, you and I and anybody else who's out there reselling. It, it doesn't matter if it's SnapTight, it's any product, right? They want to know if it's approved. Okay. So again, this is a this is a yes, yes and no. I, I, um, I, let's, it, it's a loaded question. So let's one, let's. One. We had a lengthy conversation about yesterday, but you're going to condense it for us. <laughs> I'm going to try to condense condense this pretty, you know, as narrow as I can get. But we're going to peel back this onion, and, and so everybody okay. understands. This. So, snap tight meets an Ashto material spec. It's Ashto uh, M326. Okay. In order for Ashto to present a new specification and put it in their books, there is somebody in each state that has to approve of that new spec, new standard. Uh, back in, it was 2008 was the time, uh, there was an ASHTO material standard for solid wall uh, polyethylene pipe for relining culverts that was presented to this, the ASHTO committee. Every single state had to vote yes to accept this spec. And every single state voted yes. So we gotta, you know, you gotta have 100% one state decides they don't like the spec it has to be rewritten then they go back to the drawing board they rewrite it uh every state voted yes on it so it's now in the ashto book so is SnapTight approved in all 50 states yes if you follow the ashto material standards uh not every state has actually gone to that level and and taken that spec out and put it in their actual construction manual um, but that can easily be done because the ashto M326 is currently the only national reline specification in the market. The other thing to point out with Ashto is it's not a sole spec. Uh, Ashto doesn't uh, sole spec any products. They don't promote any products. Uh, they put this spec out there and um, ISCO Industries, the manufacturer of SnapTight, looked at that spec and decided, you know what, we can meet this spec. We can go through all of the quality control standards it takes to meet this spec. So they did, they got the approval, and then every year they've, they've maintained that approval. Um, so in a nutshell, it, every state can meet the spec. I would say right now, and I'm looking at a map, I would say there's probably about 20 to 25 states that use the Ashto M326 spec. But the other 25 can use it. They may just not know about it. Okay. So it looks like my screen had um, kind of frozen on that poll question. So not everybody has been seeing a couple of these slides, which was just showing the questions that we were discussing. But I do want to go forward and show that bullet nose slide again. We had a couple of people write in who couldn't see the bullet nose slide. So I'm going to jump back to that real quick. Um, so you guys can see in that top right corner when Ryan was discussing a bullet nose and pulling it through and helping that with any deflections in the pipe. That's that's um, what I was showing on the screen. Anything so as else? Far as, the bullet nose, as far as the bullet nose, I'll just point out, that can be made in the field. So if, if you receive pipe already on the job site and you realize, hey, this pipe's been deflected or, or it's crushed down a little bit, the liner will still fit, but we don't want it to get hung up. You can actually take a, a chainsaw and cut the bullet nose in the field. Yeah. Those fingers, solid wall polyethylene has a natural tendency to bend in, okay? It's extruded out so that it has a natural tendency to kind of bend in on you. When you cut those fingers back, those fingers itself will want to naturally bend in and create a bullet. Yep. We actually just did this at an install for Idaho uh, Transportation Department on site. They were using a 54-inch to line a 60-inch CMP. It was a tight squeeze, so... Um, we had to grab a chainsaw and do a bullet nose on site. I obviously didn't run the chainsaw, they did, but. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go back to our next question um, since we answered the DOT question. So we get, we being all of us in the field, get the grouting question a lot. Um, so this did come in, does grouting have to be done or can we just slip line the pipe and leave it? If it must be done, what are our options? So, 
we strongly, we as in the Snaptight group, strongly uh, recommend that you grout the entire annular space. Uh, by just putting a liner through, while the liner can be a structural standalone pipe, uh, the grout, a cellular grout, like uh, specifically, will go into the ground and fill in all of the voids that's causing this pipe that's being rehabbed uh, to stop failing, in a sense. Um, if you just slide a pipe in, seal the ends off, let it be, the pipe will still work fine, but you have an air, you have a void around the pipe that you have to address that's causing the pothole above the roadway or a crack above the pavement. Uh, that's still going to be there. They're still going to have water, groundwater infiltrating into that, say, an old metal pipe and rotting that away, and eventually that roadway could settle down onto the liner pipe. Um, I've seen states that just do pipe rehab without grouting, and now they wish they have just grouted. They had grouted the pipe after they relined it. So we recommend the grout through the annual space. If you're going to go 95% of the way to fix a pipe, go the other 5% to, to uh, grout the annual space. Grouting, it, to me, is one of the most important parts of the whole process, but it can also be the scariest part. So don't be scared about it. Reach out to any of the SnapTight reps, uh, distributors, or SnapTight manufacturer reps like myself and ask us to help you. We are here to help you. We don't want you to be scared away of grouting. Uh, we can help you through that process. Okay, I'm going to go off of the, the pre-asked questions. We actually just got a really good question in um, from Andrea. What is the benefit of using SnapTight versus a SpinCast method of repair? So, with the SnapTight product, you have a 100-year design life on that product, and that's designated by the Plastic Pipe Institute. And I'm going to show you a sample of what SnapTight is. So I've got a, I've got a sample here. So you've got a male end and a female end. When it snaps together, it's going to be, it's going to create a flush joint all the way through. There's no bell spigot right here to create like a bubble. When you grout that annular space, you fully concealed and encased that pipe in concrete. With a spin cast type of a product, you're going in and you're you're spinning what's there, but if the pipe is egg shaped or the pipe is rotted away, are you really getting into those grooves? Are you really filling in the void that's 15 feet away from that culvert that you don't see? With a snap type product and you use a cellular grout, that grout will go into the ground and fill in all of those voids 10, 15, 20 feet away. I've seen, I've been on grout jobs. Grout comes out 25 feet away, 15 feet below me, it's pouring out behind a, behind a tree. It found a crack all the way down. It's filling in all of those voids. I've personally grouted 500 pipes in the last 11 years, and every single pipe has taken more grout than what the annular space cubic yards call for, 100%. Because of the voids, filling because all the, the voids. Gotcha. You're filling in all the voids. Great. That was a great question. Thank you. Um, okay, so another one that we get a lot. Um, so I'm just showing you guys some slides is how can you put, and this is something we get when we go to engineering offices a lot, or, you know, we get on the phone with them is how can you put a smaller pipe inside of a larger pipe and still maintain the flow? So uh, we're, it's all based off the mannings of polyethylene or specifically the mannings of snap tight. Uh, so you've got a corrugated metal pipe that's got a, an end value of like a 0.024. So you've got a roughness of that pipe. The pipe's got a rigid, rigid uh, bottom to it. By putting a snap tight pipe in, you've got a smooth, I'm trying to show the camera here, you've got a smooth interior of that pipe. So the mannings drops to a 0 0.00914. So you're gonna have more velocity of water going through that pipe. Right. Um, you've got the chart up now that shows on the far left side what a corrugated metal pipe would would be currently in the ground in the gallons per minute in the cubic feet per second. And we're following along from left to right. Then you go to the outside diameter of the snap tight and, and the ID of that pipe, gallons per minute and flow. This is based on a 1% slope. You can see the increase of flow with using a snap tight product versus just a corrugated rough pipe. 
in some cases, like say for instance, concrete pipe that has an end value of like a 0.012 or 0.15, you're not gonna achieve that same flow rate. So when we have those instances, we actually have a product called a hydro bell. Which I actually have um, in one of my slides, I believe. There we go. So the hydro bell in testing with, with two foot ahead, you've got an average water intake increase of 30%. It's not an, an, it's not an increase of flow, it's an average water intake. So it's basically like, if you've ever chugged a, a bottle of water and you've got that glug glug effect, this takes out that glug glug effect, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it pulls the eddies, it pulls these little counter currents to the outer edge and it allows more water to get into the pipe, thus getting that water out of the pipe. Yep. Awesome. So let's see, I'm gonna go back a couple of slides here, we skipped. I just had some install kind of, so we get this one a lot as well. Um, what options do you offer for larger reline projects? Snaptide only goes to 63 inch OD. So what does, what do you and I in the field recommend or offer in those kind of projects? So if there's a pipe that is larger than what a, a 63 inch snap tight liner uh, can offer. And when we talk about snap tight, we're talking about, I'm using examples. We're talking about the outside diameter of the pipe. So from outside diameter to outside diameter, that is what, that is how you size snap tight. So if you're talking about a 48 inch snap tight, that is the outside diameter, not the inside diameter. Right. Uh, snap tight as a solid wall pipe is extruded out. So it's basically taking like if you were a kid, you took that, you take putting, you squeeze it out and it comes out of your hand. That's how, that's how this pipe is made. It's extruded out with a fixed outside diameter. Anything above 63 inch, you could switch over to, if it's fully polyethylene, a profile wall pipe. So profile wall pipe has a smooth interior, a smooth exterior, and then it's either got round core profiles or square boxed profiles in between those, those two layers. That is made on a mandrel. So you've got a fixed metal pipe that is in the factory and you've got polyethylene being wound around that pipe. Uh, I'll ask I'll ask a question and answer it because it's it's not on the screen. Well, why why do you, why is it a profile wall pipe? Why isn't it solid wall? We could easily make solid wall pipe 96 inches. The so price high. would be astronomical. Yeah. It would be so, so not worth material. it. You're using so much material that it's not worth it. So you go to a profile wall pipe. Um, there are a couple of manufacturers out there. You've got um, Plus on who makes a spiralite pipe um, out of Texas, and they can go up to 120 inch in diameter, and they can make a bell spigot type of a joint for culvert relining. So it's basically got a gasket bell spigot, similar to snap tight, it locks right together. And that's you also what it's have, picture, correct? This picture is a, in this picture on the side. This is a spiralite pipe. It is. It is. It is an example of a, a type of a spiralite pipe. Yes. Okay. Okay, just um, wanted to. Yeah. You also have um, a threaded pipe uh, from InfraPipe. Uh, it's, it's called Wheelite. And Wheelite's been around for many years. Uh, it's made up in Canada and it's accepted here in the US. And they actually have a threaded joint. So you can actually like thread the pipe together. Both pipes also are plain end where you can actually take an extrusion welding gun and weld it together. An extrusion welding gun, if somebody's like, what the heck is that? That is basically like a, a man's version of a, of a hot glue gun. So anybody out there, you have wives that have those hot glue guns and they're trying to, you know, those little sticks of glue. That It's basically a male version of a hot glue gun. You, uh, you've got a, a, a spool of polyethylene that goes into this gun. It heats up and it melts onto the pipe. Um, gotcha. There are other, you know, non-polyethylene liners out there that are, that are offered. And, uh, you know, if, if these options aren't available um, or if you want to look at other options, you know, just speak to your, you know, snap tight rep or, or distributor and, and we can look at other options for you. But there's other options out there other than the two that I, you know, quickly know of. Yeah. As we know, in Reline, there seems to be 
a plethora of options. It's just finding the right option for your project, right? Mm -hmm. So Nick has asked a couple of follow-up questions going back to, I didn't want to interrupt you while you're talking about this, but going back mm -hmm. to the grout, he has um, asked how, so because you mentioned filling the voids and it's there's always more grout to fill the voids than what it looks like initially. He says, so how much grout should you order above what you estimate to cover those extra voids? So it's a game that I play. It's funny. That's a game that I play uh, uh, when I'm on a job site. Uh, when it comes to, well, how much grout do you do you order? We don't know. Um, we know what the hundred percent is. We know the exact annular space. Uh, I try to extrapolate that out and look at a fifteen percent, thirty percent, fifty percent, and so on and so forth. By looking at the existing pipe before you line it, you have an idea of what it may take. If the pipe is completely rotted out, I think you had a slide, a couple of slides before that showed a pipe like here, that's on the bottom, the bottom right and the top right, those pipes are completely rotted out. Yeah. So we know that's probably gonna take 30 to 40% more. We don't know the exact number. Um, the one on the left may, may not take as much more than maybe 15% more. Uh, okay. Go to a slide that has the actual finished with the tubes, that has the grout tubes and the vent tubes. Okay, on this one right here, I'm trying to point at a screen and, no, and nobody knows what I'm pointing at. But if you look <laughs> at the one on right the left, here, I guess. Yeah, look look on the one on the far left, you've got a you've got a, a piece of PVC pipe sticking out at about nine o'clock, far further over to the left. Right here. There you go. You've got that one. That's what they call an air vent. And you're probably asking, why is he talking about this when the question? So you've got an air vent on that side. You've got another air vent at about one o'clock up on that screen. And you got an air vent at 12 o'clock. You've got a bunch of air vents. The air is letting that, it's letting that air get out of the pipe as you're grouting. The key to this is to know if this pipe on the far left is gonna take 50 cubic yards, wouldn't we all have an understanding that at about 25 to 30 cubic yards, you should be halfway done, if not more, more than halfway done, correct? Takes right. 50. We're at 30. If we're at 30 yards and there's no grout coming out of that air vent on the far left at nine o'clock, then we know that there's a bigger void there than we imagined. Right. So then that's when you get on the that's when you get on the phone and you call ahead and you call for another truck to come out because you already know you're going to need more than what you're thinking you need. So the air vents are used to help the air come out, but it also helps gauge where you are in the grouting process. I've never, I've barely ever been able to guess exactly how many yards. It's such a tough number. You know how much you need as far as the annular space, how much more you need is, is usually a complete guess. But you're on but a job you site and you, need more, you just go, you just go purchase more and keep grouting, right? Right. You 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 have um you have a concrete, you know, plant on wheel call. And you know, if you're at 120 yards and you were expecting 130 and you're not anywhere near done, you're calling Joe up and you're saying, Hey man, I'm gonna need four more trucks tomorrow. We're not even close to being done. It, it gets to that game where you're trying to guess. It's a guessing game. We we try to get about 30 to 40 percent more. We're usually close, but it's it's a tough, it's a tough guess. Okay. Um, Nick had another really good question. Uh, is SnapTight a product that can be purchased and sit for a certain period of time before installing, or what? What is the time frame we need to use it or not let it sit? Essentially, is what he's asking. So SnapTight is not what we would call shelf life shelf life type of a product. It has a two percent carbon black UV protection built into it as it's uh, as the resin's being made. So. It could sit out in the field for years and years and years, and it's not going to degrade over time. The composition and the properties of polyethylene is not going to change. What could change is if the pipe is stacked up uh, at a yard at, say, a DLT facility, and you've got pipe just stacked up, stacked up, that's fine. But over time, polyethylene, as it's plastic, it's going to, you know, it could ovalize a little bit. It could get into more of an oval shape versus say a round shape. In order to keep this ovality from happening uh, on the ends of the pipe is, is if you know that you're gonna have the pipe sit in the yard for a year, two years, three years, put wood struts on the very, very ends of the pipe. 
-hmm. and it keeps that keeps those joints round. If the joints get a little oval shaped, you can still pry those out when you go to snap together. Um, I've snapped pipe that's been in that's been in the yard for six years. It just took a little prying out of the female joint and it snapped right together. And while I have while we're talking about the like ovality, snap type can be ovaled to to suit your needs. So if you have an elliptical or an arched pipe uh, that you need to reline, you don't have to necessarily do a round pipe. You can do an oval pipe. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I know that um, uh, Cassie Treasure Valley, you guys have an ovaling machine out west that you can yep. oval pipe. Um, yep. We have an ovaling machine in Arizona and one in South Carolina at the manufacturing plant. But um, we can we can actually make oval snap tight. It snaps together just like round pipe. One thing to know about oval pipe. I know we had a question earlier. Do you have to grout? Can you not grout? It is definitely required. That you question. Grout. Speaking of grouting, I have another really good one from Corey. He said, do you re okay. recommend grouting in one go or do you need to pour grout in lifts? Okay, I'll finish this question and I'll go to that one. So okay. with oval pipe, with oval pipe, you definitely need to grout those in place because if you pull out these wood struts, the pipe's gonna spring back to a round shape. Right. So you need to grout those in. Um, question was, uh, do you need to grout in lifts or can you grout it all in one shot? It depends. If the pipe is gonna take less than say 30 yards of grout, a lot of times you can just grout it all in one lift in one day and get it, get it done. Um, if it's gonna take more than 50 yards of grout, we like to recommend grouting in lifts where you grout, you grout the bottom end, let it, grout it all the way up to the spring line, let it set up and then come back the next day and finish it off. On bigger pours, when you're looking at one, two, 300 yards of grout, a lot of it is on the slope of the pipe. Uh, how much slope, if the, if the pipe is relatively flat, you're gonna, you know, your grout's gonna even out as, it's, as it goes and you can grout it in, in lifts all the way to the top of the pipe and then up. If the, if the pipe is like this, you're gonna wanna grout in you know, 30 yards, fill up that bottom area, and then the next 30 yards, and then the next 30 yards. Um, what we recommend is on each job, consult with your snap tight rep or manufacturer's rep um, in those cases, and we can help guide you into how to properly grout those in place and do it safely. Perfect. So I know we've hit our time. Um, because this is our first one, I want I mean, I know Ryan and I both had agreed we would just keep going and answering questions until there aren't any more. Uh, we have another question, so I'm going to go ahead with that from Andrea. What is the right, um, sorry, excuse me, what is the height of cover that snap tight pipe can stand in an open berry situation? So I had a feeling I was going to be asked this question, and I don't have my design guide in front of me to give you the exact answer. We will send the design um, guide link out after this, though. It, it, it's in the design guide, and I want to say there's it's got to have a minimum of two foot of cover, but I, I need to double check that before you print three feet of cover. But I, I, you need to, yeah, you it may be three feet, but yeah. there is a uh, there is a a threshold, um, and you have to you have to properly embed that pipe also to bring it up past the spring line and on up. I don't know what that number is off the top of my head. So Cassie will get that answer offline and provide it directly to them. Um, and I had, okay. I had a question texted in to me that's that's on the call. They wanna know if I lost my razor. Yes, I did lose my razor. I'm being you know quarantined in this house like everybody <laughs> else in America. So yes, I have, I have lost my razor. Um, okay, so this is the last question, unless anybody has any more that I that I've gotten into the question. Oh, oh, what? Okay, I think that one is being funny. Do you remember to switch the direction of your fan in the different seasons? Because your fans. So, <laughs> so technically, technically, it is going in the right direction because it's 75 degrees here uh, in Kentucky. It's going to be 31 degrees Saturday. The fan has been switched to pull the air down, but I do know how to switch <laughs> the fan to make it go up in the winter time. Um, I don't know if that was Josh. Or... Question. So another one. This is a good one though. Can okay. you install the pipe and come back to grout it at a later time, say like six months or longer? So. Um, that is a really good question. And what I like to recommend uh, for DLT people, 
if they're going to be putting in seven, eight, ten different pipes around their county, it is absolutely fine to go ahead and line the pipes, seal the ends off, have all of your grout tubes and your air vents set up. Once all of them are done, it could take four, five, six months because you could be busy doing other projects. Have the grouting contractor come in and grout them all at once. It's absolutely safe to do that. One thing I recommend if you're going to do that, get some PVC caps to put on the ends of the vent tubes and grout tubes. Don't glue them on, just kind of put them on there. That way, if you've got a heavy rain event, you don't want that water to get into the annular space and fill up. And then when you're pumping the grout in, you've got to pump the water out as you're pumping the grout in. Yeah, that makes sense. I, uh, yeah, I think that an that's a great answer. Um, so unless anybody has any more questions, I haven't seen anything come into the questions section or chat anymore. Um, Ryan and I's information is here on the last slide. One thing I would ask you guys is um, what you liked about it. We'll send a survey out afterwards. I am gonna be doing another one of these with the guest host on Tuesday. It's gonna be John Moody with Primus Line. So come prepared to ask him whatever questions you want. It's a very interesting product. Um, I learned a lot and I sat with him for an hour and a half a couple months ago and thought he would be someone to just bring us more knowledge on the reline industry. But for now, thank you, Ryan. I thought this was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it was. More of these, yeah. And if you guys really love the SnapTight product and you want to do another one of these, we'll have another guest host with SnapTight come on in the next couple of weeks. All right, thank you, guys. Thanks, guys.